In today's video, we feature another Hot Wheels Red Line. This is a 1967 Custom Firebird. Picked this up on eBay, I think it was around $11, which is actually a really good price for this particular casting. The hood is there, the window's there, and those are the two important things with this convertible. It's in rough shape, as are most of the Red Lines that I restore, but I've had some that look a lot worse on the outside but looks can be really deceiving. And at some point this may have been repainted in its lifetime, I'm not 100% sure. It kind of looks like it, but at the same time it doesn't. It looks original and there's no overspray and they did not take the base off of the body to paint it if they did do so. And we'll point out the obvious. The paint is really chipped. The window looks fairly scratched up and the wheels are in poor shape. They're bent, they're faded, there's no chrome left on them at all. The paint on the front is kind of non-existent as far as the headlight area. But again, we do have a working hood and we do have a windshield. Those are two key parts to this actual casting because those are missing quite often. We're going to go ahead and dive right into it. We're going to start restoration of this. Just like all of the other castings, we're going to start out by center punching the rivet front and then of course the rear as well. And then we will drill out the rivet. Again, like I've done in some of the most recent videos, I'm not using the small drill bit first, I'm using the larger drill bit. And that is to remove the top of the rivet. And I do say rivet, it is actually not a rivet, it's just the body post that's been mushroomed out to hold the base. And now we're going to pop it apart just like we did on the last video. I believe it was the Volkswagen. And there you have it. Two almost perfect circles. Didn't chew into the base too much. And next we can go ahead and get the interior as well as that front windshield out. The interior just pops off. See on the back there is a hole so it does go through one of the posts and the windshield actually falls out. You'll notice on reinstallation the actual windshield you put it in from the outside and kind of scoop it down but it, it just fell out there. Another look at that beat up body. Now let's work on those body pins. Now what I'm doing here is taking a file and just filing a flat so we have no concave in the post. And I'm going to center punch it yet again. Now this is pretty difficult. These older red lines, like this one, are really small. The post, though, I should say. So it's easy for your center punch to walk off as well as your bit. We're taking our .050 bit and going to drill out the post about halfway down. Here's the front. We have not done the back yet. Here we go to the back, same thing, and we're going to go ahead and tap those holes. Now I do get a lot of questions about the tap. That is a handle from an Entity Allen set, and I've just taken out the Allen wrench part of it. It does have a set screw in there and drilled it out a little bit to accommodate for the tap. That's all it is. It's actually part of that set right there that I'm using. There's the screws installed. And next, off camera, we will hit it with some aircraft stripper to remove that paint. And here is the surprises. You can see the back of it is all bent up. I don't know if you can see that in that shot. And there's a lot of damage on this body. A lot of pitting. Just a lot of corrosion. It's in probably the worst shape that I've had. I thought maybe the Eldorado was a little worse than this. It did look that way. Initial appearance. But this is probably the worst. Even the, the base. It's pretty, pretty wrecked, but we are going to work on it. Taking some sandpaper. Now I actually had to start with 800 grit. I've been starting with 1200 grit and it's been fine. I did try some 1200, but it did not work really well at all. So we're using 800 with the dry sanding and just, I spent probably 45 minutes sanding this down just very lightly. See, it's getting better, 
but it's still pretty rough. And you can see that dent in the back. That's part of the casting. And right here, right above one of the wheel wells, there's a nice divot. They're kind of all over. Right there, the door, and on the hood, there are quite a few of them. There's the back. I'm trying to kind of point that out, how wavy it is. The hood, there's a lot of damage. But after this, I actually wet sanded with 2500 grit and got it quite a bit better, but not 100%. Now we're using our metal polish, or actually this is our polishing compound. We're going to go ahead and take a buffer wheel and just polish the snot out of this thing. Now this will remove most of the scratches, although after the 2500 wet sanding, they were pretty much gone. See there's that divot still there, still the waviness in the back, but we've got a nice chrome finish. Well, it's nice that I'm going to get it. After this, we go ahead and clean it with some mineral spirits to get any residue off because we have to prepare for paint and I'm using the Spectra Flame Blue now, this is probably the third car fourth car that I've done in blue but this was originally blue and I wanted to keep that theme I'd be happy to know that I'm actually out of the blue Spectra Flame I've used it all so the next two cars or a few cars will definitely not be blue we're just spraying on some light coats now this is actually a time lapse I've cut up the video the first two coats are really light and then I start going heavy on like the last three coats. But it may seem like this is happening fast or it's all in one shot. This is, I think we did five or six coats. So this is like five, five shots and they're just bunched together. Now in each video I like to try at least one thing a little bit different than the next and we're going to try something different with the base. You'll notice the tumbler behind me. Now I've used the tumbler before but I've always used like the kitty litter style media that I use for reloading. This is some rust cutting media that I've actually had for quite a while and forgot about it that I used on my other channel for some motorcycle parts. So it's kind of triangular shaped. Make sure you get enough in there and I've used it. The dark green is the new media, the light green is the old, you can reuse it. We're we'll going to go ahead and put a drop of new finish in there to kind of hopefully polish it up. And then we'll drop our base in there. Go ahead and turn it on and let it run for a few hours. Now I actually let this run for about a day and a half. I forgot about it down in the basement here. And it did nothing. It did zero. It's great for getting rid of rust, but not for polishing these bases. So you will not see me revisit that again. And this is the body after paint. There's no polishing yet. We did not use clear coat. I never do use the clear coat with the Spectra Flame. We're going to go ahead and polish it with our polishing compound. And this is sped up at two times the speed, so I'm actually going pretty slow. See a little bit of the paint come up on the wheel. That's fine. It's getting better. And obviously by that shot, you could see some of those divots in the back. Those aren't going away. Do the same thing for the windshield. This is, again, the same wheel, the same polishing compound. It's turtle wax. You can get it at any automotive store. And the windshield's looking pretty darn good, I must say. A lot better than I thought. It was scratched up pretty good. We're going to go ahead and dip it in some Future Shine. And we'll let that set for at least two or three hours and now we're going to go ahead and apply some of our new finish wax go ahead and get it nice and hazed up let it sit for a few minutes and then buff it out now, this is actual speed give you an idea how slow i go when polishing with the wax with the rubbing compound i or the polishing compound rather i go a little bit quicker but sometimes i'll use a speed like this really slow you don't want to burn through the paint Next we're going to paint the headlight area. It was originally black, so we're going to repaint it black again using our paint markers. Now I have a link in the description below that goes to Amazon. It takes you right to these markers. They've been working out pretty good. We actually ended up polishing the base off camera with the wire brush. Go ahead and snap those old wheels off. 
I'm using a different set of side cuts than I normally use. These are a little thinner, but supposedly sharper. That way I don't accidentally cut through that bearing. I haven't done that, but I'm in fear of doing it. So that's why I'm kind of just taking little chunks off at a time. Go ahead and install our reproduction wheels from eBay. These are horrible, but I'm just laying them on the table and pushing down on them. I, again, I tried something different in every video. Usually I push them on with my finger, but figured why not lay them down and push them on that way. And there is the, uh, the body after the wax, the polish, all that good stuff. Looks decent, and we'll point out the flaws here. There was no getting around it. They, they're going to be there. Installing our windshield, put our interior in, and then we put our base on. Go ahead and drive those screws in. Again, this is the same handle that I'm using for the tap. I have two of them, but it's the same style of handle. It's made by Entity. I'll uh, try to put a link in the description. I think there is one already, but you will have to drill it out. And there's an imperfection. That's not a chip. That's real deep into the body. And again, that's deep into the body. And there's one on the door that kind of went away a little bit on this door, the passenger door. And I thought this would turn out a lot better when I initially purchased this casting. just because I didn't think it was that bad. But considering all the body damage, I think it turned out really well. And I've already pointed most of it out. You've got the trunk area where it's wavy and there's some divots right there. And then over the wheel well here and on the hood, there's a couple of them as well. I think I pointed that out when it was actually before it was painted. And then on this passenger side door, there was one that kind of disappeared. I, either I got the paint thicker there. I'm not sure what happened. This has no clear coat on it. Maybe with a uh, layer of clear coat, it would kind of hide those a little bit more. I don't think so. Because when using clear to kind of hide imperfections, you have to get it a little bit thick. And unfortunately with that, you're going to lose a lot of the detail on these castings. On motorcycle parts, it's easy. Spray it on. You can hide whatever you need to hide for the most part. But this is what we started with. So it didn't look that bad. I can see now that divot over the wheel well. Never really noticed that before. And also that wheel well is actually not as flared as the other ones. It's kind of missing its lip. But overall, I'm really happy with the way this turned out. Not from my initial impression, but after I stripped the paint, I'm surprised that it's came this far. It's obviously been well played with. I'm just completely surprised at how that windshield survived. It's beyond me. There's other castings where the windshield is recessed in and they're cracked. I have to say that's the part I'm happiest with is the windshield. For the condition it was in with the scratches, it looks great. Be sure to check out the description below. I'll have links to everything that I've used in this video. I've got the rotating display stand, which I get asked about daily. I've got all the paints, the tools, the screws, just about everything you need. If it's expired, let me know. I'll try to get you a new link. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to post those below. Check the channel on Instagram. I typically post a picture a day or two before a video is released. And as always, Thanks for watching.